Did you know I have a website at caseygolden.com? It's true. Enamel pins, washi tape, and so much more. Check it out, caseygolden.com. That's the ad read. Let's move on. Hello, it's me, Casey, and I want to revisit a classic YouTube art challenge. We're talking the three random color challenge. Inside this bag, I do have my 36 set of acrylic gouache, and I've bought some extra colors here and there, so I probably have about 45 or so colors. We will see what we grab. Oh my goodness, with all that being said, let's get into it. Here we go. Our first color is going to be, ha, huh, we have, ooh, oh my God. <laughs> Y'all, it's sap green. I can't even, I can't even believe it. All right, first color sap green, second color, no, I did not cheat. That was seriously coincidental. We have, oh boy. Well, to balance out our sap green, we have violet. Oh boy. And our third and final color is going to be, ha, huh. oh, we have yellow ochre. So quite a, actually, these colors go together. Hmm, these actually go together. I am, I'm actually kind of excited. <laughs> we have sap green, violet, and yellow ochre. These are very interesting. They seem like they're gonna be very earthy, but also colorful and fun to play around with at the same time. I'm getting Joker vibes, or maybe a field of flowers, my current obsession. I don't know, we'll see, I'm excited. So let's get to sketching. JK, I lied. First, I actually want to swatch our colors, mix them together, and then get inspiration from them. So here's what we're working with. This is just, it's really interesting, it's so, so earthy and on brain for me, except for the purple. Let's see what sort of inspirations we can take from these colors and get to sketching. Taking inspiration from these colors, what are we gonna draw? I have to be honest, I was thinking about drawing a human character of some sort, and then I just started thinking centaur. So I have a feeling that I'm going to end up drawing some sort of half human, half uh, animal, but I don't really want to do a horse. Horses are so, I don't know, everyone does a horse. Let's do something silly maybe. Why are they so hunched over? I don't even know. Let's see, um, cat, a cat. What do cats look like? References, who uses those? <laughs> maybe I should. That means I need to give them cat ears, I think. Maybe that would be cute. Oh, and a cat nose instead of like a human nose. I don't know why it looks like this person's like, hand it over, spit it out and hand it over. Okay, I like the idea of a cat centaur. I think this will be a lot of fun, but I think we need a more exciting pose. Like maybe they're chasing a bright purple ball of yarn. Would, they, would the back be like going for the string part and then the front, the front part's going for the actual ball itself. Oh boy. Oh my gosh, I'm just thinking like, how would a cat centaur person like, you know how cats like ball up and like lay upside down? Oh my God, what? Okay, what am I thinking? Okay, I'm thinking like, like how would the human half work? Would they just be like breaking their back? Okay, I could either do a circle of grass or, um, bear with me, if we have like, a hill or something. Maybe they could be chasing the ball of yarn down the hill. This is what artists draw like for sure. And yeah, we have like green for the grass, but I'm thinking purple for the ball of yarn. We could do purple flowers. Yellow could be, what kind of sky color? Would we just like have a yellow? A yellow to like white sky. That would be interesting. It would kind of be like a sunset or something. Yeah, I think I'm thinking our character could be chasing a ball of yarn down the hill, the grassy, grassy hill. Love it. Let's do it. So I was pretty 
excited going into this illustration. I really liked the pencil. I was excited to start it. I was feeling a little bit confident with the colors we chose, but once I was staring at the finished pencil and I was ready to start coloring, I was really drawing a complete blank on how to color this piece. These colors are quite dark. We have our dark green, we have our dark violet, and this yellow ochre color honestly is a little bit on the darker side and I was a little concerned about how I was going to balance, you know, our tones. There wasn't going to be a balance of lights and darks in this illustration because all of our colors were dark and I know gouache is a material that you can water down and use basically like a watercolor. But to be honest, I never really like the way gouache looks if you add too much water and I really like to use it at full opacity. In fact, the only time I watered down any color is when I shade the white of the fur and kind of hated it, but I kind of felt like I had to. <laughs> And that was a challenge I was willing to take and I wanted to tackle. So at this point, I thought, you know what? I think my best bet in this challenge is going to be using the paper to my advantage. Usually when I do gouache paintings, I use white paint to color over the paper because I just feel like when I leave parts of the paper white, it just feels unfinished. With watercolor, I leave paper white because obviously using white watercolor on paper is pointless, but something about gouache paintings makes me feel like I need to cover the entire page and you know what? I was gonna break that rule. Because all of our colors were so dark, I thought the only way to go about this illustration was going to be using the paper, and so I decided to make our cat white and work around there. But overall, because our colors were just so dang dark, I needed the white of the page to help balance this piece, and boy, did it help. So I started off by painting the entirety of the sky of this piece a dark brown, and I created this dark brown, and I I know there have been some comments I've gotten in the past with my random watercolor challenge that mixing the colors together is cheating, which art police get the heck out now. <laughs> no, if you think using the white of the page and mixing the colors is cheating, get out now. <laughs> also, the green is the only color that I didn't use purely in its straight out of the tube form, so you will not be tolerated and I will be sending you fart emotes in the chat. I mean the comment section. Sorry, I've been Twitch streaming way too much lately. So I definitely used mixing to my advantage in this challenge. I created as close to a black and the darkest color I could achieve by mixing all the colors together and painting the entirety of the background the dark color to make sure that the white fur of our character really popped off the page. And I just, I really needed the character to pop. <laughs> the colors were so dark that I needed, I needed that pure white. Threw a little yellow ochre sun behind a cloud, cute. And it was time to start coloring the rest of our image. I'm not gonna lie, at this point, I was quite nervous about how this piece was going to turn out. It, it was intimidating coloring the background that really dark color, especially knowing that the rest of the paints were going to be quite dark themselves. I was just really nervous about the balance of this piece, but you know what? Turned out pretty good. I started off the grass, which was a mix of the yellow ochre and the green. I just didn't think that sap green was poop enough, so I had to make it poopier. From there, I built onto our character, starting off with the hair using the pure yellow ochre. I went into this piece also with the intention of very minimal shading. I just find that using bold colors and shapes when using gouache is my best strength, I guess you can call it. I always thought that gouache was a very good fit for my style, but I think I just, it took me a while to find my place with gouache and I think I'm finally getting very comfortable with it and I'm super excited to keep experimenting with it. So minimal shading, using bold shapes and colors, and just making sure that all of the aspects of this character were very separate without line art. I was going to add line art later on, but I wanted to make sure that the base of this character really could hold its own without line art, just to make sure that, you know, we had a good balance of colors and such. 
I created the perfect dark skin tone by mixing the yellow ochre and the violet together and just adding more and more violet when I wanted to create shading. It was at this point that I was feeling actually pretty blessed by the color combination that we drew because oh my god, purple is actually my favorite color to shade with and it was working out quite well. I will admit that violet is a little bit obnoxiously bright, which is why I don't like violet slash purple, but because this piece was so earthy, it was definitely a nice addition to move throughout this piece. So after I added the line art, which I used the exact color as our background because I thought it would be really interesting to just have the line art blend into the background. I thought that worked really nicely for this piece. I love it. And then I went on to add additional flowers and the yarn that moved throughout the piece, adding just a little bit of pop of color. And that was that. This piece was quite a challenge. I was very nervous going into it, but I think after I took things slow in one part at a time, it really came together and I was actually quite impressed on how these colors came together. these minimal color randomness challenges and I'm definitely going to be doing a two color challenge later on with the gouache so look forward to that. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you the next one. But before I go a huge thank you to my patrons for all of their support. If you want early access to these videos, patron only streams, coloring pages, and more check out the link to my patreon in the description. Thank you guys all so so much for the support. Also don't forget to visit caseygolden.com Bye.